Welcome to Vets to PM's Military Transition Academy podcast, the show where we discuss how to succeed in transitioning from the military service to the civilian workforce. This show and the academy it represents helps veterans transition into meaningful, lucrative post-service careers. Your primary host is Eric Doc Wright, PhD, certified manager, military veteran, serial founder, best-selling business author, philosopher, linguist, and coach. Your other host is Jeremy Burdick, project management professional, scrum master, product owner, and retired Air Force chief, and the current COO of Vets to PM and the Professional Development Unit University, where we will interview veterans successful in corporate America and business to bring you nuggets of wisdom every episode to make you more successful. Next, let's introduce today's guest. We've got a special treat for you today. We've got a panel of people just chock full of information, but starting off with this search seven cities was founded in 2018 by CEO and lead listing agent, Rich Zapata. That is our main guest, but he brought in his team of folks and the mission of search seven cities team is to provide the premier customer service experience for each home seller buyer um, that they work with knowledge that they've gained throughout the years working with the local market really empowers them to provide home buyers and sellers with advice that need to make informed decision. Whether it's selling homes, searching for a home or negotiating a contract, each member of their team is experienced real estate professionals who apply their expert skills to each step of the process to help each client achieve an outstanding result. So Rich Zapata and his team are joining us today which includes Haley Cox, uh, the operations manager for the team. They oversees the daily ops of the team being from a military family. She has a heart to serve military members and their families. She likes collaborating with people and come up with new effective systems and strategies that add value to people's lives. Haley also enjoys being outdoors, spending time with her husband, Colton, curled up and watching movies. Can't blame her there. We also have Eric Thurber, Born and raised in Mission Valley, California, he enlisted in the United States Navy in 96. Through some hard work and dedication, was promoted to Chief Petty Officer in September of 2012. Eric is now retired from the Navy with 23 years of service and works with Search 7 Cities Marketing Manager, utilizing talents that he loves technology, right? In this spare time, he um, likes to balance between investment strategies health and fitness, and most importantly, his family. We also have Zach Cheatham, and what he was also Navy, enlisted in O2, promoted chief petty officer as an aviation boatswain mate. And what he has actually is a skill bridge member currently, right? He was with the Navy for 20 years. Uh, he's got four kids, a wife, and he loves spending time with them. In his free time, after making six military moves from Florida all the way to Japan, his mission is to ensure a positive home buying and selling experience to each and every client. So excited for you guys to get to meet these. This is one of the first times we've done a huge panel like this. So lots of knowledge about to be dropped. Let's get started. We are pumped, man. So thankful for uh, the opportunity to chat with you guys. Oh, dude, yeah, speaking of pumped, I like I've only had four cups of Irish tea today. So <laughs> you guys are going to get the like toned down version. <laughs> yeah, man, we're excited. Well, thanks for having what? us. Hi. Hello. This is Haley, our operations manager. We, we've met before. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we have. But, uh, hi. Thanks for having us. This is you great. Bet. Hey, so let's do intros real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Start with you. Um, okay. Haley, operations manager. Um, been here for a year and seven months and love it. Love, uh, I just do all the operations, um, manage kind of the aspects of each business, making sure tops are spinning. And if they're not, try to work out a solution on how to fix it. So that's kind of uh, what I do and um, love it. We uh, partnered up with him first and then we added um, these two and they just have been amazing. So excited to keep growing. So, yeah. Well, I'll tell you as a guy who leans on my ops guy, my chief of ops for every freaking thing to include keeping me out of jail he also doubles as my he also doubles as my podcast engineer dude learned how to spell podcast like 90 days ago awesome. <laughs> what 20 downloads a month jb yeah yeah 47 i think monthly he's like godzilla stomping through downtown tokyo man 
Yeah. Hey, that's something that we I, we would love to start in the future is doing do some sort of podcasting. So yeah. um yeah, that's inspiring. we got some characters, man. Yeah. We can put on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right. And then who else you got there? Yeah, so uh well I'm Bridge Sapata, CEO uh of uh, Sir Seven Cities Real Estate Group, powered by Keller Williams Realty. Um, yeah, born and raised New York City, city kid through and through. Went to college, State University of New York, upstate. Got uh, uh, undergrad in communication and media. Uh, I was a business grad, couldn't hang, not gonna lie. I hated macroeconomics and, and like statistics and all that crap. So uh, I went to communication. I love to talk, as you can see. So I, I crushed it in communication. And then I got a master's degree in sport management. I wanted to be the next Jerry Maguire. And so, uh, but someone told me you gotta be, become an entertainment lawyer before you become a sports at, um, sports. Um, agent. So I was like, no, I'm not going to school anymore. I did six years of school at that point. And then um, I joined the Navy. I was going to go officer, um, but they told me I would have to wait for a while, put in OCS packages. And, and I just, I had hit rock bottom before I joined the Navy. So um, I said, no, just put me enlisted. My dad was enlisted. I'll go officer afterwards. I just kind of want to go to the enlisted route anyway and be with the fellas on the ground, uh, you know, kind of turning and burning. And then um, I'll go hang with the O's after and so I got enlisted. I dropped eight officer packages, never got picked up. Totally cool, whatever. I did 10 years active, uh, decided to get out and start my real estate career. And then I did two years reserve. I'll never do that again. Reserves is not my cup of tea. Um, and so, yeah, we've been, I've been real estate since 2018. Um, big advocate of, of just veterans and opportunity, which is why we, you know, we'll talk about this later, the dynamic of having an internship program and bringing veterans like-minded who uh, want to explore business and real estate and all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, that's a little bit about myself. I have a beautiful, beautiful daughter who's going to be two years old in a month and a half. And um, she's my pride and joy. And I, yeah, I've been living here about 11 years and I love it. So. Oh yeah. Wow. That's great. Who you, you flanked by my friend? Oh, uh, Eric Thurber, I'm, you know, retired chief now. Um, got my real estate license uh, for last Friday dropped. So now I'm actually licensed. Uh, did 23 years of amazing service. Um, just found out I got 100%. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, Congrats, Chief. Uh, I'm right still in shock, by the way. Yeah, right before we came in here, saw it literally. literally. It's like, wow, this is amazing. Uh, so now I can enjoy what I do and just uh, try to keep going in the right direction. Yeah. Too cool, man. Too cool. Wife, kids, oh, yeah. dogs, oh, yeah. wife, four kid, kids. four dogs, four kids, uh, four kids, one wife, or actually four wives. Sorry, <laughs> my bad. Three ex wives. Three ex wives, <laughs> one, one active wife now. So, yeah, it's uh, pretty much a, you know, a Navy chief. <laughs> Navy chief. Navy chief through and through. Oh, man. Hey, so uh, I'm Zach Cheatham. I'm from uh, Alabama, very, very small town there, just outside of Birmingham. Uh, joined the Navy at about 20 years old, right before I was 21, maybe. I uh, did 20 years and six months. I'm technically still in. I'm on what, this, what they call the Skill Bridge Program. Uh, I've got about another 40 days till I'm retired. So I'll be retired in about 40 days. So, um, yeah, did the Navy for, like I said, 20 years, six months. I'm what's called an ABH. I'm a chief as well. That's flight deck of aircraft carriers. Did uh, 14 years at sea doing that. And then um, now I'm here, tripped and fell into this, and I'm loving it so far. Crushing hey, it. man, we got we got two-thirds of a troll boat crew in here, man. Five <laughs> out of the six dudes on the call are from the fleet, right? Yeah. Out. Yeah. Four out of the five. One of us can't count either. Oh, my God. <laughs> I actually spent most of my career – I'd never been stationed on a ship. I was most of my career expeditionary. I was a riverine for five years. Gunner, comms, you know, comms guy. All that punch him. Say again? Him in the shoulder, Zach. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. kidding, Rich. Yeah, dude. Green side all the way, but the time I spent on a ship was cool. But uh, these guys are real gray hull warriors. Yeah, I got so. a lot of salt on my boots. Man. 14 salt. years, like I said, at sea. Uh, wife, four kids uh, who did about 12 years of that with me. Many, many deployments. You know, Oconus, two Oconus tours, one in Japan, specifically, like I spoke with, uh, with Jeremy there. Um, I'm just really excited about what's next. Well, too cool, man. We've got a skill bridge program over here at Vets of PM and we just, we couldn't, we couldn't be more thrilled with it. In my humble opinion, man, being at DOD as a civil servant and being at DOD as a sailor, um, man, it's the best program somebody ever came up with up there at OUSD. Best kept kudos, just kudos to them, man. And, and they should keep it going. 
And and caveat emptor, let any administration beware. Whoever thinks that that program should not continue funding into perpetuity. Yeah, it yeah. changes absolutely. the lives of hundreds of thousands of people every year. Yeah, absolutely, brother. Preach for real. Certainly the best program of my 20, almost one years that I ever saw come through. Uh, you know, we like to talk about taking care of our sailors, our airmen, our, you know, soldiers, whatever. That's that's the way to do it right there. Set them up for success when they leave, uh, especially if they're retiring. Certainly after they've done 20 years and don't have any other experience, you almost have to do that. And, you know, Zach, so I so, so I'm an old knuckle dragger, right? I'm an old welder, man. So like staying yeah. in the lines when I'm coloring and stuff is rough sometimes, mm-hmm. right? But, I mean, look. <laughs> So here's to me, you know, and to Eric's point, hey, I just got my rating and whatever. So, so, so I've, I'm a relatively intelligent dude, I think, right? I can read, I can comprehend most stuff I read, whatever. So here's the crazy thing, multiple crazy things that you just never know when you're transitioning, yeah? So yeah. your DOD, government property, right? That's why they used to call us GIs, yeah? Government issue. All the way up until you take the uniform off, sign the paper, retire your card, like whatever you do, whatever your separation looks like. At that moment, you're VA, but not until that moment. VA doesn't want anything to do with you in advance of that, right? Have the, have the service rate you in like whatever nonsense. So you got that whole limbo going on. And then when you, when you get out, right, you're now – a civilian workforce person your civilian labor force so technically transition programs fall under the purview of department of labor because dod shifted that responsibility so here comes the vet right going through a three-day tap class right va doesn't want you dol doesn't know what to do with you because they're civilians and civil servants and dod doesn't want you anymore because you're not a chief i can't put you in the fleet you're not on my anybody's billet uh what do we do with you now so I think the skill bridge program in our experience is just really giving guys and gals, man, that space to kind of figure out, okay, how do I make this transition from that caterpillar is, to butterfly? Yeah. Like, you know, I need a right left boundary here. So anyway. Yeah. Hey, look, uh, doc, I, I talked to Eric about this this morning. It's, it was, we were just talking about the transition in general. And when you enter the civilian world, let alone the business world and real estate world, where everything is super dynamic, flexible, I, there's some similarities to the military, and then there's things that are completely opposite of the military, right? But the thing is, transitioning, getting adjusted is, in the military, you're using one part of your brain, maybe two parts of your brain to execute, to follow orders, to, you're, you're in this mental box and of like, hey, do what I got to do, boom, boom, boom. You've been executing like that for 23 years, yeah. 12, 12 years, for 21 years. And so when you get into the civilian world and especially the business world where it's a lot more freedom to think, you're now using a different part of your brain that has been sleeping for 23 years. So it's like, dude, how do you do that? How do you reignite that that part of your brain and process and understand like, hey, dude, you don't have to run this shit past Master Chief anymore. Hey, man, you got freedom to think for yourself, bro. Hey, there's no board judging you on this, bro. Like there's no cap to what we do. Hey, man, like, you know, it's it's crazy. It really is. And what well, bring that. Sorry, JB, but dude, what a great analogy, right? Think about it. Like, Eric, when's the last time you filled out a resume, bro? How many years ago uh, was that? Wow. That was uh, six months ago when I came on Skillbridge. Yeah. That was <laughs> it. That's Before the then, what, though, dude? It was like a fast food joint or a Home Depot yeah, or something, yeah. right? Like, 18 so years old, so I was crazy. Yeah, when they say, when, when, when people who mean really well stand up in front of us and say, hey, Make sure, Zach, you get that resume squared away, bro. Hey, Rich, make sure you use that LinkedIn thing. Dude, when I transitioned out, Al Gore was still creating the internet, brother. There was no LinkedIn. You know what I mean? Like, they they tell you to do this stuff, but I I don't have any tactical guidance on, like, steps one through nine. It it doesn't mean anything. Until I get out and get kicked around, I show up my first interview, and the gal's looking at the resume, and she's like, you wrote this yourself, did you? <laughs> like, <laughs> why, why is this written in crayon? <laughs> we yeah. have open positions down in shipping and receiving. Let's start you at the yeah. way bottom. We'll put you in a basement with a swing line stapler. Never mind. Anyway, yeah, JB, I, I stepped on you, dude. What were you going to say? No, I was just going to say that I think that it's, it's obviously a really kind of a cool, this is one of our unique podcasts where we've got a panel, right? A panel of three people that did transition at all different stages you know, we still got one that's actually in transition with the skill bridge. We got one that transitioned out and then went right into business. And we got one that's, you know, retired now medical, um, you know, 
benefits as well rolling in. So kind of more of a solid transition. So kind of cool that we've got some different stages, some different perspectives, and you bring up using the other parts of your brain. Um, you know, what does that look like? Obviously, you're, you're seeing it, Rich. But what about, uh, you know, Eric, what, what do you what do you think about that comment? Like, is that that's a, a it's a factual say we have when during that conversation just realizing how different people are in the civilian sector we have certain ways of doing business and i have a certain way i've been doing it for so many years just to turn that off and foster an environment knowing how to work with people and their different perspectives on just in general it's like i can you tell somebody to be quiet or you know use some good words and, <laughs> but i can't do that in the civilian sector right. i've got to learn how to what is it what do you say is always sandwich and tackle. Oh, yeah, the sandwich, sandwich tackle right. sandwich. Good, bad, good. <laughs> Never knew about that. You just tell somebody's a piece of shit, and that was it. <laughs> yeah, tact and professionalism for sure. Like, and then you know, the tight community of being in the military, no matter what branch you're in, because of the close quarters, because of you know, people that suffer together, bond together. So, like, you know, we can talk freely and crazy sometimes, but you know, being in a certain environment where there are civilians where you have to display you know, a certain level of control with your language and how you, and then, you know, Eric and I, our personality and Zach as well, our delivery sometimes is a little off because we're used right. to being very forward. Right. And, and so, yeah, it's an adjustment, man. But I would hope, and Haley, you can attest to this. I would hope we have a, a positive impact uh, with the civilians we work with in terms of like, wow, man, like working with these guys, I've become well-rounded, you know? And then on our end, for sure, like, man, working with civilians, they keep me in check. Like, I've become a more well-rounded leader, person, even father, friend, business owner, you know? So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And Zach, are you starting to see that like other part of the brain wake up and say, Hey, like, oh, wait a minute, I was asleep. Let me, let me get this going. Yeah. It, it's so far. Um, it's been really strange. Obviously some stuff is really weird. I can, one specific story. Um, there was a couple empty parking spots right at the front of the building. I'd been working here like two months. I just like, I was parking like way away because I know, you know, as a chief in the Navy, that's fairly high, I guess you'd say. Here, I'm bottom of the totem pole, and I get that. I'm the newest guy here. So I see these parking spots at the front, and um, I park as far away from them as I can. I thought it was for, like, the boss CEO. and the CEO <laughs> and all that. And I kept asking people, like, why is nobody in that spot? Like, what, you know, what time does the bosses get here? <laughs> what's, what's going on? And, uh, and they're like, no, those are open for grabs. Anybody that wants to get them. And just something that minor. Uh, was just mind blowing to me. I'm like, that's the CO, the XO, and CMC spot. What, what do you mean? Anybody can just park there? That's the first three spots. That's not for us. You know? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. What's going on? You know what a great point, dude. So there's there's a couple things, like a half a dozen, right? Things that like landmines vets step on that we don't even we don't even know we're gonna step on them. That's one of them. <laughs> yeah. First of all, we've been taught not to ask for help, right? Like figure it out, get mission done, like hell or high water, right? So Absolutely. we feel like asking for help to sign a weakness or something like that. So your ass parks nine miles away from the office for seven months before somebody happens to over here at the water cooler and say, hey, man, how come how come <laughs> never parks closer than nine miles away from the building, man? Brother doesn't have to take the tram, man. He can you know, park up here in the front. The other thing, too, is, right, like um, – uh, so we don't ask for help very well, right? Oh, and we don't talk about ourselves. It's if my team did this, my crew did this, the ship did this, like, you know, whatever. And look, here's the reality, man. There's not a hiring manager out there listening and or looking at your resume right now, listeners in podcast, uh, MTA Podcast Nation, that, that knows that you didn't do all that stuff on your resume all by your lonesome. There's no such thing as that by your lonesome in today's globally connected economical world. I mean, look, butterfly flaps his wings in China, man. Supply chain and Long Beach gets jacked, right? Like, yeah. like we're all connected. So the hiring manager knows that you led this team and directed that team. And But man, when you sit in an interview and they're like, so tell me about you. And you talk about your team. It causes frustration. Like, man, I'm not trying to hire your team right now. I'm hiring you. You're in the interview seat. So tell me what you did. How did you get the team to mobilize? How did you be, how were you the catalyst? You got to learn to talk about yourself. Don't walk in there all braggadocious, right? And like be offensive, but you got to talk about how you helped the team, right? And we see vets all the time that don't do that, man. So they don't ask for help. They don't talk about what they did. So nobody sees any value and they break stuff. And then when they get reprimanded or, or let go, they got no clue as to why, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Another thing I noticed transitioning is there's this thing called two way conversations in the uh, civilian world, right? And like, <laughs> that is, that we is have weird. We, 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 we like talk about feelings and stuff. And I'm like, wait, I'm not sitting in my master chief's office being one way conversation, like <laughs> do this or else, you know? And so it's like, um, you know, even with these, these gentlemen as, as freaking badass as they are, and I feel so fortunate and lucky to have them as well as Haley and other civilians that we have in our company, like, Hey man, this is going on. This is going on. I, I guys talk like, like, it's okay. Like, let's just two way talk. Let's just, Hey, we're open ideas. Let's work and talk it out. Like there's no, nobody like we're open, man. Let's be creative together. Let's figure it out. All right. We can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it, man. You know? So I, it's a beautiful thing though. Yeah. Good, good point. Because, you know, <laughs> on more than one occasion, I have heard someone say, hey, set your radio to receive mode only. Oh, exactly. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I don't want to hear what's coming out of your mouth. You just listen to what's coming out of mine. So I love that. I mean, honestly, that's that's just not the way the civilian world works. You right, work yeah, together right. to find a solution. So yeah. I think that's and there's good. good there's good examples of leadership in, in the military. And there's poor examples, to be quite honest, you know, and Sometimes we have discussions about the poor examples and what we learn from it and how we can be better leaders in the civilian world and taking some of those nuggets that we learn in the military world as leaders and applying them, but also knowing that, dude, that doesn't apply here, bro. Like that actually makes you a poor leader in the civilian world. So do not adopt that philosophy. However, comma, adopt this one, which is awesome, you know? So um, I don't know if you guys want to speak to that. Yeah, yeah no, I, mean, I, I agree 100%. You know, and I noticed, so so I don't mean to be offensive, so you dudes can punch me in the shoulder next time you see me, but I've noticed especially Navy senior enlisted, right? So my chief's mess. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and love you all to death, right? I mean, uh, but one of my, almost every single one of my buddies retired as a master chief, right? Um, but anyway, they, uh, I said, how'd you guys do that? I never pegged you for master chiefs. They're like, they kicked your ass out of the fleet, bro, med boarded you out, and our careers like went like that, dude. That we stopped hanging yeah. out with you, but anyway. Um, they, when you guys talk about leadership, that deck plate leadership, right? Mm -hmm. It really comes across strong leadership, leadership, leadership. But let me ask you guys a question. Do you have experience like running budgets and rosters and personnel training and like, like planning what you're doing in your department division peer? Like you have experience doing that stuff? Some of it. So when Maybe I was like, so then I was an expeditionary for a little bit. So we had to be the jack of all trades, uh, yeah. basically being the chief. You first boots on ground from there. You got to figure you got to figure it out, understand who's coming in and start building that plan. And hopefully it doesn't fuck up yep. and hope for the best. So you got deep experience planning. You got deep experience and resource in those plans. And oftentimes not in a resource rich environment, like mm -hmm. austere. Military vets are the only ones that use that word. But when we say austere to each other, man, we've been there in the suck. We know exactly what austere means. It means I'm lucky if I got bubble gum and duct tape, and that's what I'm trying to hold this whole thing together with, right? Yeah. So you've got deep experience planning and organizing resources and controlling things. So if this is the way it's supposed to go down, and this is the shit show that's happening instead, how do I get that back on track? Here's right. why that matters. In the CIV, when you say leader... They heard executive, they heard chief executive officer. And they look at your resume and they see 20 plus years, you know, Department of Defense, nothing in Coca-Cola or USAA insurance and banking or whatever, <laughs> right? But the reality is, is from the, from the civilian perspective, managers plan stuff, organize those plans, lead the people in execution of the plans, and then control performance to plan to make sure we hit the objectives, right? So when we find guys and gals talking about lead this, lead that, lead the other thing, man, the civilian's like, well, okay, they got 25% of the experience I'm looking for. When really you got all the experience, they just didn't see it or hear it. And oh, by the way, the executive interview is uh, for a different position. It's not in my department. That interview's next Tuesday and it's down the hallway. So I guess this interview's over. <laughs> when really, man, the whole thing went sideways and you didn't even know it was going sideways. So that's one of the things we teach our guys and gals in our DOD skill bridge program is, hey, man, talk about management, your experience, your full set. Highlight the fact that you lead well, because a lot of civilians, as you'll find out, may or may not. They're not formally trained how to lead in schools. They're not evaluated OJT and leadership on, in billets. I mean, they're just not. They get their leadership through books, seminars, webinars, if they even care to go and read that stuff, you know? Right. Yeah, that's why... Um... Man, I was so pumped up to, to, to learn about SkillBridge and stuff as an employer, as owner of a business who is recruiting people. I'm like, 
dude, so you're telling me I can get a freaking amazing dude like this guy who's transitioning out and have him for six months under my wing training and have, and have that, you know, have, get him a, a head start and also have him work with us. Like, that's amazing because I know the hard and soft skills that uh, people of that caliber have. Right. So to me, it's just like, am I biased? Cause I'm a veteran. Yeah. But like, I want to hire like almost nothing but veterans because of the level of experience. And I know how to translate it. We know how to translate what we did in the military versus what's at task in front of us in the civilian world. It's like, Oh, oh I did that. We do that all the time. Like he was talking about a system, uh, a maintenance system called SCED for like mm-hmm. scheduling uh, checks and all that for maintenance. You guys know that. And then we were looking at a system where our ops manager was a civilian and he was like, yeah, that's awesome. That's just like SCED. And I was like, SCED, yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, yeah. So like she didn't get it, but like we got it. So we were on the same page and then we explained to her what it was, but it, it translates. It's just a matter of how and where does it translate, you know? So yeah, that's, that was, that was a big thing for, for hiring. And I'm, I'm super happy, man. We've gotten tremendous results. So. Yeah, that's great. That is, that's, that's really cool. And as we go forward and you guys got, um, you know, you're getting the requisite experience and doc brought in, Hey manager, that's sometimes a bad word, right? It's, it's sometimes right. a bad word in, in, uh, in the military, you hear that and you're like, well, I'm not a manager, I'm a leader. Right. Well, in the that. civilian world, you got to be able to manage and do the blocking and tackling. Otherwise it's just a small subset of success. You got, you want the whole picture. You've got to be able to plan those resources. You got to be able to control them and monitor them later and organize everything. And yes, lead, but that's just a small port, like portion of it. So you want that round individual that can manage as well. So uh, speaking on some of this other stuff is, you know, when you, when you talk about the transition guys, like, give me, give me your story, Eric, what, you know, how did your transition go as from, and then we'll talk, about Zach's, and then we'll talk about Rich's. So my chain of command didn't uh, approve of this for a very long time. They were fighting me for the whole situation because they wanted me for certain exercises. And they're like, oh, you're the only person that's qualified. Yes, but I'm retiring in less than a year and a half, guys. You guys got to train. We've trained your, I've trained my relief. Everything's ready to go. You need to sign this. They kept on telling me, hey, this is a, we're not going to let you go. And then I had a commander He's like, no, uh, you're, you're too valuable. We're under man. The Navy's under man, right? So let me just transition out of the Navy and we'll call this good. Eventually, fast forward two months later, they allow me to come on board or let, let me go do it. They allowed me to. And then from there, I just kept work, just, uh, just to have you three days a week. And then from that, finally, after January, like, okay, you can go five days a week. But the transition is such a different dynamic. It's going from a, a military structure to an uncertainty and then continuously trying to uh, figure it out because I guess I was the first one in the military ever to retire, feels like. There's, there's, there's no, there's no yeah. SOP. Yeah. Everyone is like, hey, this is it. Like, you're the first one out of since the dawn of time to retire from the military. Like, no, I, that, that guy just retired like 10 days ago. Uh, well, How in the know, world did the Navy make it 240 plus years without you, Eric? What the hell did uh, they do for right? before you? But, that, but that's how it feels. Everybody feels like it's uh, their story is different. Well, it's the same idea, same thing. I'm going to get my DD-214 and I will leave the cross the blue line and that's it. I'll be forgotten about and let me just move on. But just transitioning to this kind of environment, you have no, uh, there's like no, no lateral limits. It's, it's whatever you make of it. And if, if you decide to be a piece of shit, you're a piece of shit. If you decide to be a phenomenal person and do great things and push forward and learn an environment, you, the sky's the limits. Yeah. That's you're pretty good. That's, yeah. that's good for me. Nice. Nice. Yeah, man. I can't, I can't agree more. It's uh, I, I, I felt that exact same way. It's like, wait, who's going to do my job? And I remember my father, I'm third generation air force. My granddad was in the air force. My dad was, and then um, I was, and I, my dad gave me a really interesting piece of advice in a letter back when we used to write letters, not emails and a letter <laughs> when I was deployed, he was like, Hey dude, just remember you're a number, right? You're a number on a spreadsheet somewhere. You need to take care of you while you're doing the mission and prepare for you. And just remember you're that number. Like, ah, it was like, and it dawned on me. And I was like, okay, the air force was here before I got here. It'll be here after. And someone will fill those shoes. It's my job just to make sure that it's a smooth transition for that guy while I'm taking care of my transition on the front side. So, I mean, how did that work for you, Zach? So, it, man, I couldn't agree more with what you just said. That's that's extremely accurate. Uh, so for me, 
it was a little different than Eric. Uh, mine was a little bit more smoother with my command. Um, they, they let me go, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. I said, I got a wife and four kids and I've done this literally my entire Navy, my entire adult life, like pretty much anybody else that's retiring. And, uh, I was terrified, you know, like, what am I going to do? I got to, you know, I got to support four kids. My wife's a stay at home mom. Uh, so, you know, everything's on me, even though there will be a retirement check, there will be a disability check and all that, but you know, there's, there's a gap. Uh, between pay to what starts. And then, you know, I, I, had, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I grew up. I still didn't know. I still didn't know. You know what I mean? I'm like, what, what am I going to do? Um, I got lucky and kind of tripped and fell into this uh, actually with Rich and the uh, Search Seven Cities team here and uh, got really lucky. They've been super fantastic, uh, taught me everything that I need to know. Uh, and for me, the way I looked at it, it was, it was a six month free trial at a new career. That's, that's what I've called this from day one. So, hey, 180 days in a free trial at something. Okay, let's see. I do this and I suck at it. Okay, oh, well, I move on. No harm, no foul. I know one thing not to go after when I retire. Now, I don't do this. Do something else because you suck at this. Or I do really well and I have a job already going in the transition seamless. Uh, and it feels like at this point for me, uh, they've taught me enough to where I feel like my, in June when my final day actually hits and I got my DD-214 and I'm a civilian, <clears throat> that my uh, my transition is going to be pretty seamless. I feel like uh, going to be just walk right out, right in, and that's only because of this particular program. Yeah. There's no doubt that had I had had to stay up in the Navy and just do my you know 60 days terminal leave or whatever, it would have been a totally different ball game because you know it'd been great, cool. All right, I got 60 days off work now. That I'm still going to get paid. What do I do? I'd have probably done like everybody else and partied or did whatever for the first you know two, three, four weeks. And then got really scared, had no idea what to do, and just panic mode, looking for a job for the next four weeks, and what I'm going to do next, you know. But that I didn't have to do that because of this and because of them, actually. You know, Zach, and you make a really salient point, man. So, hey, now I know what I don't want to do. I mean, that can be as valuable as knowing what Absolutely. you do want to do. And, you know, Rich's point of, hey, we've had some bad leaders. Hey, you can learn as much from a bad leader as you can from a good one. Like, hey, that's Every what good. not to do because I can see what that does to morale and welfare, right? So what a great point, man. And then, you know, talking about at least you've had your legs on the ground now under you, regardless of whether you stay with seven cities or don't or stay in real estate or don't or whatever. I mean, you've operated in something that's not Navy. They've got floors instead of decks. They got walls instead of bulkheads. They got, you know what I mean? Like you at least yeah, have days to like figure out, okay, cool. I know what my right and my left is regardless of what and i tell vets that all the time man hey man just because you go to the first gig out of uniform doesn't mean you got to stay there forever you don't got to do 20 plus years at some place that sucks anymore you don't it's your you're the commander of your destiny now right in fact we look at resumes all the time 18 20 24 36 months and then hey why'd you switch jobs rich oh well i was upskilled or hey i got a raise and a promotion or hey they threw a twenty thousand dollar signing bonus at me out here in the Civ Div, it's all about winning the pennant, man. So if the team you're on sucks and another team that's going places throws money at you, go play for that team. Go win a ring. Like, you don't have to stay, which, you know, is – it can be horrifying. It can be scary. Like, whoa, what if I leave? But, man, when you figure it out, you can leave anytime you want. You just remake yourself, learn a new language, and, like, go land with on both feet like a cat. Man, you can go do anything. That's pretty dang empowering. Well, like yeah. Eric said, yeah, Eric said it best, man. You want to be a rock star? Go be a rock star. Absolutely. You'll make it happen. Like you, you are your, the, you, know, you create your destiny, you know, the master of your ship. So, I mean, I love that. Uh, great, great, Rich. I mean, I think that was uh, good. And also you got to step on some, some of those landmines before the next gig, if you don't like this gig. So you, you do get to try it out. You find out if you like it. It's what, college kids do through the beginning of college, right? They're taking, they're taking all these classes. Well, I'm going to do a psychology. I don't love that. Let me move it to this. You're doing it in real world life. I'm going to go try this search seven cities. And we don't work with people that don't, aren't friendly to veterans, right? So this is a situation where we've got a wonderful company like search seven cities that is a owner that is a veteran himself. So, uh, I mean, what, what a great place. And I'd love to hear about your transition, Rich. Yeah, man. Uh, so my shoot, I didn't even know about Skillbridge when I was transitioning. I one of my mentors who, who re-enlisted me 
uh, at the six year mark. Uh, I was like, Hey man, it was a warrant officer, uh, Eric Zach, uh, Eric Jack. Um, and he's like, Hey, why didn't you read list for six, uh, six years? And, uh, I'm like, nah, man, I'm going to 10. He's like, dude, are you getting out of 10? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm getting out, man. Like I'm going to bet on myself. I'm going to figure something out. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do it. And fast forward, I got to the, you know, the nine year mark and I'm like, all right, what should I do to set myself up? You know, my version of skill bridge was just getting my license while I was still active duty. And I was hustling my butt off on my off time. I was in short duty. So I would let my class out early. I do my little duties, my little maintenance work center supervisor stuff. And then I would take off, go into a 7-Eleven bathroom, change into my work clothes and go sell yeah. homes and show homes. And that was just what I wanted to do. I didn't have a kid at the time. I had some freedom. And that helped me transition and save up some money to where when I did fully get out in 2019, I was already rocking and rolling, had some money saved up. And it was just like bet on myself. Um, and it's, it's scary. It's commission only. And it's like, all right, well, then I kept telling myself, Rich, you bitched and moaned this, this whole time. And you want some freedom and you want to be able to, to tap into your entrepreneurial spirit. Well, here's your opportunity. Don't screw it up. That's basically what I was telling myself. And I was like, I'm fully confident I can do this. And worst case scenario, I hit rock bottom. I've been at rock bottom. I don't care. We'll figure it out. We'll get back up. And that was my mindset. And I made it work. But, you know, it wasn't easy. It was, it was long days, long nights. But I, it became addictive and I loved it. And, and, and I was, and I'm now I realized I was able to provide opportunity for other people. And I'm like, all right, this is it. This is it for me. So, but the, the mental and emotional, there is, an, there is a, an, a, a mental and emotional thing you go to when you're approaching retirement or separation that a lot of people don't talk about. Whether they want to talk, call it depression or what, whatever you want to call it, there's a weird an anxiety and like panic that's, that happens in the pit of your stomach as you're approaching this, this deadline. And so I felt it even after 10 years and I was like, oh God, what is going on with me? And so... Um, but, you know, you get over it and you figure it out. And, and my transition with my leadership, they were pretty supportive. My command senior chief was now a master chief, great friend of mine, Taurus Sullivan. He was like, hey, are you getting out? You're like one of our top sailors. I'm like, yeah, man, but I, I got a cap, man. And, you know, I, I feel like I, I have potential to do more in this world and I have to give myself a shot. I'd kick myself in the butt if I didn't, if I didn't uh, try now. You know, I'd look back and regret everything. He's like, I respect that. And he was, he's been my biggest supporter. So he's been a great example of great leadership. Um, but yeah, that was, that was my transition. So, you know, what, as I sit and look at you guys and I'm listening to you, I mean, <clears throat> you guys are creating a whole nother tribe, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's still brothers and sisters in the fight together, right? You're just selling homes instead of sailing ships. I mean, right. You're still in the fight. So, um, that, that intangible, you can feel it, right? You can't necessarily put your finger on it, but working in a civilian company, like, you know, Zach was talking about, man. They don't even, they aren't even aware that you're parking in the back 40, bro. Much less than they tell you to quit, right? Because, I mean, you, all they know is you don't look like, you look like them, you kind of dress like them. But when you talk, occasionally austere slips out or retrograde slips out or a knife hand slips out. They just, you like Peter Parker, you look like them, dude, but they know you're different. Like they can sense something's different with you, right? Um, so it's really cool that you guys are creating this tribe where, you can welcome brothers and sisters coming in. So a couple questions here for you, since we've got, since so many of you are along different paths. So what are some things that you think are making you successful doing what you're doing? And then what are some things that you guys now as hiring managers and stuff sitting on the other side of the table, right? In civilian clothes, what are you looking for out there in our brothers or sisters that you can really capitalize on so everybody's successful? Great question. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, Haley, if you want to also talk about this as yeah. a civilian. Um, so, because we've been deep diving into hiring as an ops manager, we have like an entire hiring process and whatnot and recruiting. Um, but so the, what was the first part of the question, Doc? So, so what are some, and we'll flip it since we got Haley in the, in the frame now. So flip it. So for, as, because you're all hiring managers now or will be soon, what are you looking for? What are some things that, the candidates you're looking for can bring to you because you know it's going to make you both successful. And then when Zach gets back in a frame, the question will be to you guys, the vets, like, okay, now you're a civilian. Now you're in a civilian organization. You're still doing the same stuff, planning, managing, leading, organizing, all that stuff. 
but what things do you think you bring to the table that somebody should capitalize and make sure they talk about in their interview? So the hiring manager goes, no shit. I didn't know you could do that. Like I'm hiring you. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I would say, and, and something I've always admired, I come from a military background. My dad was in the Navy, um, my grandfather. And so I admired their drive, their willingness to do anything. Right. And that's something that people just, people in the military learn and adapt. So so when Eric and Zach came and we talked to them and interviewed them, they were like, man, I just want to get my feet wet in anything. I will sweep your floors, right? If I could just learn the way you teach me the way of your business, right? How to be a real estate agent, I will do anything. And so you do not find that a lot with people, right? They're like, sit me here. I want to be placed here. I could offer you this. They're like, man, I'm just so hungry and ready. Teach me anything and I will do anything for you. Yeah, right? that's that humility and that humbleness, that mm-hmm. willingness to learn us. You just, you You can't, you can't teach. It's just, and that's what drew me into Zach and Eric so much. And that's what I find to be a lot of just people transitioning out of the military. They're just so used to just. Just doing. Yeah, doing. And so that was something that's super interesting and uh, was super humbling for me and and made me just gravitate towards wanting them as a candidate and, 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 you know, on our team. Yeah. Um, What I look for in candidates, those same things, but like, um, the willingness to learn, the lack of, you know, no entitlement, like, hey, you're not, nobody owes you anything. And you get that real fast in the, in the, mil- in the military because you can be humbled very fast. And so, and, and also um, just like willingness to make, to accept changing some habits that may have been poor habits in the military or that just don't translate well to the civilian world. That's also uh, great. And just being executors, like whether you were a chief, E78, E9 or E5, and you were at, you know, on the deck plates really going after it, just the attitude. And I've always preached this. The attitude is everything, man. You don't have to know how to do anything. If you have a great attitude, we can teach you whatever you need to do to be successful. And that's really what I look for, man. Team, you know, team player attitude, you know, um, and, and that's it. And we can take that anywhere, you know, Eric thoughts. Yeah. I think it's the transition piece is the hardest part for me. And then when people are transitioning, it's that, you're put, someone's pulling the blanket off you. Basically, you have no security blanket no more, and you're on your own. So if you make a mistake, that's it. But you, if you, as long as you're humble and you can understand what, what's needed of you and keep that drive up that you've learned in the military, it makes it a lot easier. And having people a lot younger than myself tell me what to do when I've been, always been the one in charge. And, and taking that as like, okay, cool. This, these people have been doing this for a while. Let me just take that humble pie and see and learn from them. If, if I can learn from them, they can teach me the ways. I. I'm going to be successful as long as I just listen and not try to fight every direction because I was once in charge. That's my biggest thing. What a great attitude. And what a, what a mind swap, right? Like, Hey, I'm not, I'm not driving this anymore. So it's so amazing that Haley would say, I said that in an interview, Eric and Zach. So literally I'm interviewing with an exec. I'm going to be his finance guy. Right. And he says to me, and I, I saw 20 of the interviewees in the lobby. And he happens to say the very last question he asked me in my final interview, after all day long, like four or five interviews, right? Like now it's the final interview. I'm 37 years old. I'm not the 24 something sitting out there with the right degree, you know, and whatever. And he says, son, he's old retired army colonel, right? Son, you see your competition. There's 62 of them. Why should I hire you? I said, well, sir, not only am I a damn fine analyst, but I'm going to use my fine, fine Navy training. I'll make you the best damn cup of coffee you ever had. And those will be the shiniest floors you've ever walked across when you come in in the morning. I just need a shot, sir. I just need a shot. And so it's just amazing that you guys would say that. And think about, as a hiring manager, think about what you just said. Not your words. You showed courage. You showed candor. You're not going to tell him what he wants to hear. You're going to tell him what he needs to hear so the place works better. Humility, right? Courage vulnerability. I mean, you know, if I'm the hire manager, I'm like, man, I want 10 more of you guys and gals. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So for sure. Hey, real quick, just the dynamic and Zach kind of speaks to this, the dynamic with Haley being our office manager and being my right hand person for a year, a year and a half plus, and then Eric coming in and I know him before this and we're friends, but now we're in a different environment, right? He immediately showed that humility, took his chief hat off, showed courage, showed honor, and took that learning attitude and immediately applied it. 
And then now we look at Helios, you know, he answers to Haley. He's 20 years older than Haley and has a ton of experience. However, he's never thrown that in her face, right? And we, the attitude that we as a team, an executive team have with somebody amazing like Haley, who's 23 years old, and, and we believe in her so much is we're going to create this protege. We're going to create a beast out of a leader and a manager and a, an executive out of Haley. So we're like teaming up as her big brother, but also respectfully understanding and listening to what she says. And I thought that was just the most amazing thing because he could have went high and right and been like, dude, I've been a chief for 20 years. I'm not doing this. I'm not this. And it wouldn't have worked for me. I would have been like, dude, you're not, you're not a fit, you know? So yeah, it's, it, that's been amazing. But Zach, if you want to speak to now, what we're looking for when hiring people, what you're looking for in a oh, person. Well, you know, well, you know and the transition piece. I'm not really in a position to be hiring people, but um, you know, what I would look for uh, is hopefully what I have tried to display to them is it's someone who just, you know, really like what you said, whatever I do, I don't care how many applications you've got, they're not going to do what I do as good as I do. I promise you that. Uh, or if they do, I will die trying to do it better. I promise you that. Uh, because, you know, I've got goals. I've got things I've got to do. Mouse that I've got to feed. Um, and then so that's, you know, if anybody that is willing to do that, and put that kind of foot forward, if I was in a position to hire, that's what I would be looking for, whether it be civilian or military. Uh, you know, if you're willing to go that extra mile and take care of what needs to get done, when it needs to get done, how it needs to get done, that that's what I would look for personally. I don't want a trophy because I showed up. I'm gonna come in here, boss, and bust my ass, and we're gonna go win a trophy, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, oh yes. I don't need no participation trophy. <laughs> yeah, and it's truly a merit a merit based, you know, merit based industry and and world that we're in with business and real estate. And uh, hey, man, there's no cap. If you do it and you get the results, keep doing it and keep getting better results. And we all grow together. And that's been kind of the culture that we try to foster with each other. Like, hey, man, there's nobody holding me back, bro. Like, if you want to knock on doors all freaking day, sell as many homes as possible, I will have no choice as a CEO to if, help you grow. Like, my goal is for everybody to grow. If you're already crushing it, all right, we got to find a way for you to grow even more. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no board telling me, telling you, hey, you can't promote yet because you didn't quite blah, blah, blah. It's like, nah, dude, we're getting the results. Let's keep going. Amen. So in addition to don't ever use your knife hand again and don't be 20 minutes early to every meeting because you make all everybody else that ain't look bad and all that stuff. What are a couple tips you could give guys and gals transitioning out or already in the workforce trying to get performance? Because a lot of times the, the reality is, man, we can be intimidating. We don't even know we're doing it. Something's yeah. got you a little sideways. The jaw gets set. The shoulders go back. The feet go shoulder width at forty-five degrees out. You know, and it, like you don't even realize you're doing it, man. And it's not a pilot. Tell to, to folks who've never been around that kind of military. Again, they don't have a military bearing word. They don't have a word for force multiplier. But man, they know it when they see it, right? Right. Right. So, what are some things that we, you would suggest that we throttle back, or you know, kind of work on? To, to, so that they see the good stuff that you guys just said you're looking for, if anything. Yeah, just, yeah I think this uh, learning how to eat the humble pie early and often <laughs> is probably the biggest thing because you're going to have different different perspectives and you have to listen. You have to listen to what, what they're saying. It's weird having that situation where I have to listen to somebody that is a little younger than me, but at the same time, they bring, they bring value. So understanding that value, eating the humble pie early and often and understand that you can't knife hand people anymore, <laughs> but you can be stern about it, but you just can't go high and right and treat them uh, the way that I, I guess a piece of shit. Yeah. You, got, you got to be like, okay, let's, let's foster this environment. Let's make you grow. Let's learn together as a team and, and, and foster an environment where we can make something better of you. Yeah. With me, it was like the, the being late really gave me anxiety for a long time. I would literally have nightmares about getting to quarters late. I'm sure you guys can all relate. Like literally nightmares, wake up, <gasps> okay, I'm not late for quarters. And so like when I first, first, first uh, started building the team, uh, you know, it was like, hey guys, you're late, we're doing push-ups. <laughs> Any questions? Oh, what do you mean push-ups? No, we're doing them as a team, don't worry, but we will be doing push-ups and we're gonna do it with a smile on our faces. I'm not, I'm not hazing anyone, I promise. But, and, and, and I, I toned it back a little bit. I'm like, hey guys, look, Here's the reason why it's just, you know, accountability. It's important and it's important that we do the push-ups together as a team. And so we're just aware of our, uh, you know, of, of us being on time to meetings. And so I throttled it back a bit, but I made it more of a fun thing. And I think the civilians appreciated it. 
Um, and I was surrounded by nothing but civilian women and I had them doing pushups for being two minutes late <laughs> and it was, but it was fun. But yeah, I mean, I, I guess that was kind of a, a funny culture shock. Too funny. Wow. That's funny. <laughs> I mean, for yeah. everybody out there listening, I know in this uh, podcast nation, I don't know if you guys are picking it up, but if you if you haven't, I'm going to recap some of these things, these tips, these tricks, and the and some of the personality traits that you can try to display. I've heard drive, right? I mean, that's have that you just innately want to go do mission, right? Don't lose that part. Be willing to adapt to the new environment. Right? Yeah. You don't have to go in there kicking oh. doors down. You can actually try the knob first. Right? Yeah. So that's, that's probably a good, a good tip. Um, adapting, uh, but also being humble in that adaption. You aren't whatever was on your sleeve or on your hat the day you got your 214. That's, no. that's gone. We appreciate your service. Um, we know that you were important and you still are important to your community but you have a new community now and you got to go earn those new stripes. So I think I that. that's a good one. Um, and this is you guys' word. I'm just re I'm just re saying it so that everybody else can hear it and then seeing value in the people that you may not have seen value in. They may have been or looked like a dirt bag if they were in service, but we're not in the service anymore. Right. It, that, that animal that was in that old forest, is in a whole new environment and can serve a different type of purpose in the civilian world. So see value in the people that you didn't see value in before. Use them to learn about your new environment. So I don't know, man, I, I picked up a lot from that. Doc, what else? I, if you can't, if you're listening, you can probably sense it. If you're watching us out there in MTA Podcast Nation, you may or may not, but just the camaraderie, you know? So, uh, Rich, you had mentioned, I think you and Eric served together or something. So did you guys ever serve together? Were you on the same command or same schoolhouse or? Yeah, same same command. Passively saw each other in hallways at hey, Chief Thurber, you know, ET1 Zapata. Hey, what's going on? We kind of knew the same people. And then um, I actually served with his wife and knew his wife on deployment before I knew him. Then met him at a CrossFit gym. We kind of became friends and sold them a home, <laughs> like, Hey, sold their home, had them buy a new home. And, um, yeah. So when he, when he expressed interest in, uh, transitioning into this world, I was like, dude, hell yeah. Dude, like a retired chief of your caliber come work with us. Like, absolutely. What does that look like? And then the skill bridge thing popped up. So that was, that was awesome. And then the camaraderie is getting stronger, man. Like getting to know these guys, getting to know their families. It just motivates me as a leader and also them as leaders to just like, to, to get tighter, understand each other's personal situation. Cause it's not all just business, man. Like we have lives. He has six beautiful kids. He has kids. I have a kid, our civilians, you know, one is pregnant. I want them to remember that we care about each other, man. You know, like you would, that can get lost in the sauce when you're in the service for so many years. Like sometimes you don't feel like the people around you care about you that much because mission first, mission first, mission first. And I want the culture of our company to be, you know, missions important, you know, person first, person before money, person before whatever else going on. Like, hey, you want to take a vacation, go somewhere, uh, just communicate up the chain. We're good to go. Rock, you know, rock out. We got your back. We'll cover down. You know, so it's been great, man. You know, and it's not just that connective tissue between the tribe members that wore the nation's cloth. I mean, you got Eric's talking about the value of the civilians and, and you know, uh, learning from them. And, and, and that's the cool thing, man. You guys can teach them 20 plus years worth of leadership, like honed at the deck plate, right? Like teaching more stuff about leadership than, 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 you'll, than they'll ever have learned and you have forgotten, right? And, but they can teach you stuff as well. And I think for me, that's one of the cool things is so you meet other veterans that you never served with and you can talk about all the good stuff. You don't have to PT at O Dark 30 anymore, Right. Like there's, a, you can put your hands in your pockets when your fingertips get cold. Like you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. But yeah. you also, like Jeremy said, <laughs> do what? He said, absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely not. So, but like Jeremy said, I mean, it's everybody's got a role to play. And the mission now is not just get it done or everybody dies on that hill to do it. It's, hey, there's probably a profit motive. Hey, there's probably a good time savings motive. There's, there's other motives. And it doesn't really matter who's doing what. If we're all contributing, then we all succeed and we all win rings, right? Even the water boy gets a Super Bowl ring. You know what I mean? 
Like that's how it goes in the sieve, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, that's great. As we as we start to wrap this up, is there anything that um, one? We'll just go around the room because we got three of you. Anything that you want to share from your personal story that was, hey, this was the aha moment when I was transitioning that really put my mind, I opened up the other two thirds of my brain to the civilian life since we brought that up. And then two, if there's a professional book uh, that you read that was like, oh, wow, like that one really put it together. So I'll start with uh, Zach and then we'll just go to um, Eric and then we'll end on Rich. Well, honestly, with the book thing, no, there's not for me just because I don't really read a lot of books. Uh, since I have been here, though, Rich has made me read a book, uh, but it may not translate to everybody uh, depending on what they're doing. But if you're going to get into real estate, uh, millionaire real estate agent is definitely uh, I did. Uh, I listened to it, actually, uh, versus reading it. But same thing. It was great. And anybody that's looking to do anything with real estate, highly recommend that to them. Uh, and then the, the aha moment, I don't, I don't know, um, just the, the team camaraderie that you guys actually mentioned it, that, that Rich is actually building with this specific team. That's been a really huge deal for me with the community that I was in in the Navy and how tight knit we are. We're very huge communities, a lot of us, but we're very small because there's only a few places we can go, if you will, uh, uh, for duty stations or whatever. And I feel like the, that family type atmosphere has followed me here which for me has made this transition, you know, in that sense, uh, a lot better and a lot easier. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. The, uh, so over to you, Eric. What am I asking? What are you guys asking? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, oh, the, oh, the ha-ha moment, right? So um, tw- about half about 24 months ago when I realized that if, I, if the Navy wanted to keep me, they had to make me the next pay grade. Yep. But, they, <laughs> but since they didn't want to keep me, they said, you're, you're capped out. You're tapped out. This is as far as you're ever going to go. So that's when I realized it's time to take care of me and, and start learning new skills and learning how to transition. And one of the biggest things that I saw was a skill bridge program was probably the best thing that the military has ever done. It helps you transition to become a civilian because it's really hard to do that after 23 years. It's, it's ridiculously hard. Your, your, your security blanket's gone. Uh, you have a lot of things that you got to worry about. You got mouths to feed. And then just transitioning, learning how to be, I guess, a human again. And then uh, just one of the aha moments is, I think that's it. How about a book? Oh, He's book. a total nerd. Dude. Book, okay, books. yeah. The one thing is a big one. I, regardless if you're going to real estate or not, it's an actually really good book. And it just teaches you how to I just do the one thing that you do every day. That's the, It's a really good book. Also, uh, Rocket Fuel. Rocket Fuel is a real, like, just figure out what, what personality you are from either a visionary or an implementer. So yeah, those are two books. There's a lot of other ones, but uh, but we'll stick with those. All right. Yeah, Founder, Force Multiplier, that's another great book. Um, So aha moment, um, Eric just kind of mentioned like the security blanket. So when I transitioned from military to civilian, uh, I lost the so-called security blanket of like that steady pay and there was that unknown and whatnot. Um, But when I got into business, specifically real estate, the, the security blanket that I then received from my military service was the support of the relationships I created while in the military. And a lot of my business, thank God, I'm super humble and thankful that a lot of my business came from the friendships and the relationships that I got while in the military. And that was my new security blanket. And that was just super motivating, humbling to know that I was getting the support from all these people that I've known throughout the years and served with and deployed with. And so that was like a beautiful thing because that just motivated me and made me realize, hey, you're destined for something else. You're inspiring people around you and these people uh, support you. And so that was a tremendous, just like tremendous moment for me when I realized that was happening around me and I just needed to keep pushing. And now I'm able to provide opportunity for other people. Um, and then as far as books, dude, I, I talk about this all the time, but like, I was never a reader. I'm just like super, just ADD weird, but I do spend a lot of time in the shower, in the car, especially when I started my real estate career and in solitude. And I just put the headphones on and I became addicted to audio audio books and I became addicted to podcasts like bigger pockets, team building podcasts and, you know, Joe Rogan podcasts, stuff like that. But, um, and Jocko's podcast about leadership and whatnot. And then a bunch of audio beside, I think I went through like my first two years of business and real estate, almost 60 books, 60 audio books, tons of podcasts. So, I mean, yeah, there's tons, millionaire real estate investor, millionaire real estate agent, 
Rocket Fuel, founder of Force Multiplier, leadership books. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just been great. It's, it's opened a different side to my personality. Um, uh, being out of the military allowed me to use that part of the brain where I became more of a, a, a entrepreneurial spirited person, more learning based. And so, yeah, I just, that, that's been how, that's been the transition. What an interesting group. You know, I mean, we got, I, I love, and I said in the beginning, we got different stages of, uh, you know, development into the civilian world right in front of us. And, you know, I know you guys in the audience can hear it, uh, but it's, it's just really kind of eye-opening to see. And we never really explained it this way is how you're, you're really firing new synapses in your brain. You're really turning on different portions of your brain. So I, I really like that. And that's probably, you know, as, as you come back and look at this episode, that'll probably be the name of it. Um, so I, I really appreciate you guys' time. Uh, Doc, final words. Just, man, what a what a honor to have you guys on the podcast, man. So stoked to meet each of you. Um, welcome to the fight out here on the other side of the fence. Man. <laughs> and it's so cool that you guys are still taking care of each other on your right and your left. I mean, we, we took off uniforms. We didn't take off oaths, you know, and guys and gals coming out behind us, they're going to need that. Cause it's a weird place, man, to show up on day one, right? Like, like a tie or whatever. So um, just super stoked for you. Super stoked to meet all of you, man. Keep up the fight. Good stuff. Thank you, Doc, Jeremy, awesome. for the opportunity. We're super humbled, super grateful. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. We're really, really happy to do this. Thank awesome. you for tuning in and spending a bit of time with us at the Military Transition Academy powered by Vets to PM. If we picked your interest, but you want more details, please head over to the website vets2pm.com and see if we can help prepare you for a better tomorrow or a future meaningful and lucrative career.